making a great DVD and we're giving you some great and exciting stuff. And of course it's probably fair to say it's been again one of my best years for gear. But as this lovely late autumn sun is setting on the year, I thought I'd come and have a session up in my own church and reflect and do a bit of proper fishing just for myself. And while I was sitting there I was thinking about an article I've had in mind to write for a while. I guess the article is based on a large number of people I get come on my Facebook asking about rigs, what rig to use where. The other thought I've been thinking of writing about is about indication. I just don't understand what's happening to indication. You know, the good old days we used bite alarms and indicators to let us know when we had a bite. And from that we reacted to it. Now they seem to be just ornaments on the line. So let's talk about how I go about me fishing you know, uh, in terms of indication and what rigs to use on the day. I see every time I go fishing is a new situation. So let's talk about how I'm approaching today on the church. When I've arrived, first thing I notice I come up here how sharp the wind is now. And so I decided to be on the back of it. You know, first real chilly cold wind of the year. And on the church, the fish certainly, from my observations, get out of the wind. So I've decided to fish this bank, which is known as a Wibbly. In front of me I've got wee beds, some nice little gullies of silt with some clean hard areas on top which I've just plumbed. I've got in mind's eye already where I'm going to fish me four rods. The right hand one here is in the margin. I had to plumb around found a little tiny hard spot amongst silkweed. big thing about clay pits, in a way they're the easiest lakes to read because the clay is always soft unless of course a carp's come along and cleaned it off. So. When you cast out and feel a bump on a lead, you can be fairly certain that, you know, that's an area that's recently been evacuated. So I found a little spot amongst silkweed. I'm very comfortable about that. And that's the only rod I'm going to fish slack line. There's a massive myth in my mind about slack line fishing. The further out in the lake you're fishing a slack line, the harder it is going to be to get good indication did some underwater stuff and I can tell you the bite indication is appalling. The only time I see to fish a slack line is in a margin situation. So the fish are going to be swimming left or right to this margin rod. I don't want them to come up to that rod, see the line and swim up and over it and miss the bait. So that's the only rod I've laid flat and slack on the bottom because it's in the margin, it's short range and so I'm going to get indication because the fish is only going to go one way, away from me. So what rig am I going to use for my margin rod? Well, as I mentioned, it's silkweed. I found a little hard spot. I'm not so much bothered about getting back on that hard spot. I'm sure they're browsing the whole area. So to my mind, it's perfect for a chod rig. And it just sit somewhere near that hard spot on top of that silkweed. So on me choddy, I'm fishing uh, a critter. And let's see what happens there. In fact, out of all the rigs I've got out today, that's the one I want to see roar off. And I'm fishing the bug life mix, and I'm really excited about this concept of a ground bait that attracts naturals, which in turn attract the carp. Now I mentioned we did some experiments, but even to me it was a real eye-opener when we did the underwater stuff. You know, and that is really proof of the pudding when you've got a, a guy down the bottom of the lake pretending to be a carp. It actually reveals some things even I didn't expect. Indication-wise, he was having to move 8-10 foot in a straight line out to straighten up the line enough to get a, a bleep on the side, and that stunned me that he had to move that far. Left and right, indication was non-existent. 15, 20 foot, and still no bite. You know, and it's, you know, things like just lifting up the hook and the rig and the lead that carp do, and then shake it out. You wouldn't even know you'd been done. You know, you could get done 20 times a day. The one that really got me was a myth about fluorocarbon. You know, you know a lot of people use it. I've considered it myself in the past, I'll be honest, because it's so heavy, but it's not good on knot strength, and that's why I've never used it, and I'm glad I haven't now, you know, because again, it's a myth, you know. We saw that it sunk heavens at the bottom of the rod tip and by the rig, but in between, it was just 
big coals all off the bottom and what was interesting it was like a spring until you pulled those coals out you never got any indication at all. So taking the next rod along from the right that one's fished um, in a maggot rig. Autumn winter is a great time for uh, maggot fishing I believe especially after they've been hammered all year on the boilies so that's on top of a hard patch, a ridge of uh, clay, so any carp coming along should easy see them wriggling away. And the next rod along, that's just in the silt, my old favourite blowback rig, slightly buoyant to sit on the silt, just throwing stick baits out there so I visualise they're just going to settle down and be partly submerged in the silt but also visual. So that's why I selected those two rigs. Now again, back to the big one indication. I think how I'm fishing those is what's popularly called semi-slack with a, a drop on the indicator. Key thing, if I get a pick up from a carp I'm going to get quick and positive indication. Again going back to the diver, with weighted indicators with a bit of a drop, this so called semi-slack. You know, as soon as he picked up the lead off the bottom I got a bleep on me so and he moved forward. You know, Within inches I was getting a bleep, left or right I was getting a bleep. So I'm going to know if a carp picks up that bait. And my fourth rod is in a position which arguably next to slack lining is the least understood or practiced properly and that's fishing against um, a far margin or island, something like that where in essence your indication is going to be what's referred to as a drop back. In this case I'm fishing against reeds over there. Now in that situation it's about having the line as tight as you can so you can register that fish swimming towards you. So you need a lot of tension on your line, either real heavy bobbing or a swing tight that's loaded. This is the situation where I feel um, the old flying back legs really come in. It's a situation where I love using them. Um, it was the heaviest one I can, but I put a backstop up the line because I don't want it to fly so far up that because of the heavy bobbing, I'll actually lift it up off the bottom. So in essence, I'm trying to get the line as tight as I can, but still have a bit buried on the bottom by the rig. The rig choice in this instance is a short rig, and that's because it's really been cleaned out along those reeds. So I'm fishing on a definite area of hard bottom. I've baited really tightly. This rod is a classic example where good indication is needed. There is the possibility the fish could crash into the reeds and be lost. So I've got to be on them straight away. I've got to know straight away if something's hooked. And so I'm fishing for that rod on one bleep. So there you go. That's how I'm approaching uh, this swim today. I hope I've put it across uh, simply. I don't really think it's hard, is it? You know, it's just a question of finding the spot deciding how best to fish that spot, what rig for it, and then the important point is how you get your presentation right with the bobbin and the bite alarm to be effective as possible. Now I'm going to sit back and hope for a big girl to come along. What a carp. Particularly happy with this one. Um, you can see it's a very pretty fish, but it was caught over the bug life on a Walton Boatman critter. So it's a bug life beauty. Just the sun got up this morning about 10, 10, 30. She roared off. I don't get much more beautiful than that. That's why the church is such a desirable fishery. Oh. I've had a great session, topped off by this beauty. 40 and a quarter, a new 40 for the church. And after last year's tragedy when I lost a few, it's great to see him coming back and looking 
in such good condition as this girl. What way to end? Thanks for watching guys and girls and have a great 2014. Hope you catch the fish of your dreams.